everyone, this is Mustafa from Structural Engineering Basics, and today I want to talk to you about the structural design of tall buildings. When I was young, I used to think, how do engineers know how to build tall buildings without them falling? And it was only after I finished engineering school and I got a chance to uh, design tall buildings myself uh, that I understood the laws of physics that enable us to calculate the load, the loads and stresses virtually anywhere in the building. And the problem becomes now calculating the stresses and designing the structure. So I first want to talk to you about the loads that affect um, tall buildings. There are two main categories for these loads. The first category is a gravity load or a vertical load. This has to do with anything of mass in the structure. This will be translated to a vertical load and has to be transferred safely to the foundation. This includes the self-weight of the structure, uh, the occupants, anything that has weight inside the building. The second category of load is lateral load. So this will include wind load and seismic load, and they generally affect the building ladder. The gravity load is somewhat linear to the height of the building. So you double the height of the building, you double the weight on the columns and the foundation, roughly speaking. Uh, lateral loads are very sensitive to the height because um, they are relative to the height of the building squared and sometimes cube. Uh, it's very sensitive when you apply lateral load, the overturning moment on the base of the building uh, increases uh, significantly uh, pretty quickly when the building gets taller. So how do you estimate the gravity load on a uh, building? It basically um, divides the vertical elements like columns into tributary areas estimate the weight uh, on each tributary area and multiply it by the number of loads. This will give you an estimate for the vertical load in the vertical element. When it comes to lateral load, for example, wind load, um, the load depends on many factors. Uh, first of all is the projected area, the surface area, the wind sail that will catch the wind and force in the building. Uh, also, the average, the average wind speed in the area where the, where the structure is built. Um, and when we talk about tall buildings, there are some dynamic properties of the structure itself that play, plays an uh, effect that I will uh, talk about um, in, the in the design part uh, of this video. Um, I just want to add for uh, seismic load, uh, it's different from wind load. Wind load is the wind pressure causing force in the building. Seismic load results from the acceleration, the vibration of the ground under the seismic load, pretty much shakes the building under a certain acceleration. And that acceleration multiplied by the mass of each floor, the mass of the building, will cause forces um, on the structure. Obviously, all these loads need to be taken into consideration, uh, and the structure engineer will design the structure um, to withstand all these loads. So let's talk about the structural design. There are three main groups or category of design things that needs to be um, taken into account. The first category is the force-based design, which is pretty much look at the load choose the material, control the stress, and make sure the structure is safe and stable. This is obviously, you don't want the tall building to crumble under its own weight, or when it's very windy, it starts uh, falling or um, damaging itself. That's the force based design. The second group or category of design is the displacement based design. And this has to do with um, the comfort of the occupants of the building. If the people living on the 20th floor or the 30th floor start feeling significant movements and displacement when it's windy outside, um, 
this is obviously not comfortable at all, and they might consider not living there in this structure altogether. So this has to do with the stiffness of the um, structure, and this can be affected by two things. The stiffness of the material used, the stiffer material used, this can help control the, the lateral deformation, and the inertia, the stiffness of the structure itself. And the way I understand inertia and the stiffness of the structure is the resistance of the structure to, uh, or the capability of the structure to resist lateral load. So the stiffer the structure is, uh, the less deformation it will experience. So in order to design for the perform or the uh, displacement based design, uh, special attention needs to be considered to the lateral load resisting element. There are many systems that can be used, like shear walls. Uh, those are ideal around the elevator shaft and the stair cases. Uh, there is also cross bracing, um, brace frame. Uh, there are different systems that can be used to resist lateral load. The challenge here is we, if we want to build taller buildings, so how do we increase the stiffness of the structure? This is a very interesting point because it will have to be closely coordinated with the architecture design and the function of the building uh, because these structure elements will start taking space and um, could pretty easily start getting in the way of the natural flow and the use of the building. So um, the rule of thumb, you start with like a pretty simple system, let's say shear wall. Um, you test the, uh, your design for the uh, displacement uh, based design. If it's, still, if it's still not meeting the requirements of like the mass maximum displacement, that will not result in for example, breaking windows, or start shifting doors, uh, or things like that, then um, the solution could be obviously thicker walls or longer walls. The longer the shear wall, the more effective it is actually. The length is much more effective than the thickness. Or you might want to start connecting um, groups of shear walls together. So the um, something I usually do is start introducing uh, beams, um, um, rigid beams that will connect, let's say, the elevator group with the staircase core shaft to kind of increase uh, the system and get different elements to work together. The taller the building, uh, the more of these elements that need to be used. And in some cases, we start introducing um, like exo exoskeleton uh, like bracing type, exterior bracing, uh, and connected to the core to increase the stiffness of the building uh, to enable the structure engineer to design a much taller building. The third category I want to talk about is the performance based uh, design. And this has to do with the vibration that the structure uh, experience uh, during its use. So let's say under um, wind load, um, very high speed winds could start inducing vibration uh, in the building that uh, humans can actually sense it and feel in, uh, uncomfortable to it. So there are systems to um, control these vibrations. Uh, there is a very interesting uh, system called the, the uh, tune mass damper. And what it is, is introducing a mass with uh, certain properties allowed to move in a certain way, uh, precisely located in the location of the building when the lateral load starts uh, causing uh, vibrations in the building. This mass will move in a certain way to counterbalance the forces and get the structure uh, to remain within the limitations of the human consciousness. So obviously, lots needs to be uh, taken into account when designing tall buildings. Um, this is a topic I'm passionate about. Um, I always like to um, uh, explore different ways uh, of um, looking at uh, 
efficient design and uh, building taller buildings. So if you like this video and would like to learn uh, more, don't forget to uh, subscribe and uh, visit our uh, website at structureengineeringbasics.com. And I will see you next time. Thank you.